Welcome back. We're still going to be dealing with systems of equations in algebra. We're looking for that intersection point in the two graphs, but it's kind of cumbersome to graph these things all the time. So we want to figure out a different way to solve it that doesn't require graphing. And substitution is actually one of the most powerful things you're going to learn here in algebra. I'm going to tell you right now, I've used this concept of substitution to solve systems of equations all the way through calculus and trig and engineering classes. You just use it over and over and over and over again. It's something that you're going to use a lot. So let's start out with some simpler examples and go from there. Basically, we're given two equations, which means we have a system of two equations. This is one of them. X is oh, y is equal to 6x. And the other one is x plus y is equal to 28. Now, we could obviously graph them. We could graph this, and we could manipulate this and graph this guy and find their intersection point, but we don't want to do that. What we're going to do is substitute. What we are basically saying, this first equation is y is equal to 6x. That means that if we figure out where these lines cross, there's going to be one x and one y, and only one, where they actually both cross at the same point. That's what we're looking for. And this equation tells us that y is equal to something. It's equal to 6 times x. But this equation also involves x and y, right? So what we can then do is substitute. We already know that y is equal to 6x. We can take and plug this value in to the, to the corresponding location in the other equation and go from there. So let's do that here. Let's take this and let's substitute it in. So over here, the second equation is going to be x plus y, but now we know that y is equal to 6x. So we don't want to plug the y in. We already have that. We want to stick this value in that we know it's equal to. So we put 6x here because y is equal to 6x, and then we get 28. So on the left-hand side, what do we do? We can add those together and get 7x is equal to 28. And we can solve this by dividing by 7, which gives us a cancellation. So x is equal to 28 over 7, which is 4. So actually, that's really, really important because we figured out, no, 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 uh, notice that when we graph these guys, we get a point, x comma y. That's the solution, x comma y. But here we found half the solution. We know the x value of the intersection point, which is 4. How do we find the corresponding y value? Well, we go and take our answer, and we can substitute it back in. We can either substitute it into here, or we can substitute it into here. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. So let's take this and stick it into here. What you're going to get is y is equal to 6 times x, but now we know x is equal to 4, so y is equal to 24. So basically, um, this and this are really, really important. They're basically the answer. So what we say is that the point 4, 24 is the solution. If we were to graph this equation and this equation, they would cross at one point. That would be 4, 24. Now, I want to say one more thing before we go on to the next problem. We substituted in and solved for x, and then we took this value and substituted it into here. Just for grins, I want to take this, and I want to substitute it back into the other equation just to show you what would have happened. So it was x plus y, so 4 plus y is equal to 28. We solve for y by subtracting 4 from both sides, so it's going to be y is equal to 28 minus 4, y is equal to 24. So you see, whenever you get the first variable solved for, you have a choice of putting it here or putting it here. Either way, you're going to get exactly the same answer. So I always just choose the easier equation. This one looked easier to deal with, so I chose that one. But at the end of the day, you're looking for that point, in this case, 4, 24. Now we want to solve one more equation, one more system of equations. What if we had um, s equals t uh, plus 2, that's one equation. The other one is 2t plus s is equal to 17. So what we want to do is substitute one variable in. Now this equation is already solved for s. So we can take this value of s and we can stick it right into there. Since this is already solved, we can very easily do that. So I'll draw a little picture and show you that what we're doing is we're sticking this right back up in here. So what we're going to get is this equation, 2t plus s, but we know that s is equal to this, t plus 2. t plus 2 is equal to 17. Now on the left, we can add the 2t and this, giving us 3t plus 2 is equal to 17. And so in order to move the 2 over, we have to subtract 2 from both sides. So we'll get 3t equals... 17 minus 2, 3t is equal to 15. 
make sure you understand that all I did was take and subtract 2 from this side makes it disappear. Subtract 2 from this side and that gave me 15. Now I can divide both sides by 3, giving me a cancellation. T then becomes 15 divided by 3, which is 5. So this is half of the answer. Now I get and I've solved for one of the variables. I can either put it into here or I can put it into here. I'm going to get the same answer either way. I'm going to choose this one because it looks a little easier to deal with. S is equal to t plus 2, but now we know that t is 5, so s is equal to 7. And so when we say for the final solution, um, you can write it as s is 7, comma, t is 5. So we say this is uh, s and t. This is the point there. We could have had an equation in x and y, and then this would be x and y. We just have different variables labeled. But basically, you, you calculate the value for s, and you calculate the value for, of t that makes... Uh, that satisfies both of these guys. Now there's one thing I want to say before I close the section out, and that is, is that if you're going to solve a system of equations, notice we have two equations here, and we have two unknowns, x and y. So the number of equations must match the number of unknowns in order to solve it. I'm going to write that down. The number of equations must match the number of unknowns. And pretty much for all the problems I'm going to give you, this is going to be the case. Because basically it's, it's, it's unsolvable if you, don't, if you don't have that. So if you have, for instance, um, you know, uh, one variable, or let's say three variables and only two equations, you're not going to be able to solve it for all three of those variables. I know we haven't gotten there yet, but eventually you're going to solve uh, equations with three variables in there, and you're going to find the, the common point between all three of them. So you, if you have three variables in your equation, you need three equations to solve it. For all of these problems, we're going to have two equations, and so you'll always have two unknowns, x and y in general, and that will allow you to solve it. Now, if you uh, have parallel lines, you're going to end up finding out that there's no solution, and we're going to find and, and go through some examples to show you how to look for that, just like we did when we were graphing a little bit before. But if the lines are not parallel, they're going to cross somewhere, and you're going to be able to find a common point that we'll call the solution. So make sure you understand this. Follow me on to the next lesson. We have a lot more to do. We're going to do a lot of these problems because it's very important in algebra.